Watch this front flip. <laughs> you serious? My mom's really religious. So. I used to be along when I was young. I was raised in it, but uh, now I'm not. So, Brad just told me a little bit of a a nice story about his ex-wife. <laughs> Whenever he did something wrong, she used to read the Bible to me and alert the elders if he did something you're, you're wrong. Totally wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> That's kind of sad. Actually. Now I'm a badass, but I'm a fun ass at least now. You are. You are fine. You know. I just. just it's okay. You can, you can be you. It's fine. Yay. Mm -hmm. I like to be me. Until I tell you you it's, can't. No. It's so much easier. <laughs> oh, you can't stop me, you twat. No. Twat. Oh, you said it right. I said it right. Oh. You twat. Yeah, it's not twat. It's twat. All right. Okay. Where'd my glasses go? Huh? I don't need them. <clears throat> what are we doing? Brad Williams. Oh, yeah. Shit, okay, I don't right even have this ready. Okay. Oh, man. See, that's what happens when Brad gets... Talking about his mommy. <laughs> Everything goes out the window. He gets all sad. Look at his eyes. He's been crying. <clears throat> Actually, I was coughing because I might have had a puff for a little bit too harsh. <laughs> Jesus. He only coughed for like two minutes. <laughs> okay. You okay? Yeah, kick my ass. Holy. Do you need some. Goes mouth, into mouth the lungs mouth. the wrong way. <laughs> Ooh, mouth to mouth would be great. <clears throat> Boomer. Or <laughs> 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 Daddy needs a little mouth to mouth. <laughs> By daddy, I mean the dogs. I was talking about the dogs. <laughs> Nothing like watching a midget won't cure. <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry, well. <laughs> little person. Oh, God. Actually. Oh, my God. He almost looks like a little midget you now. Yeah, it's what? Brad. It's mini me. What the hell? It's mini me. With a little more hair. Okay, so now we have Louis C.K., Bill Burr, and Brad Williams. <laughs> if I had a baby. <laughs> If you were born a midget, that's what you'd look like. Yes. There you go. Okay. So I heard he's pretty good, Sorry, so that's why we're doing person. him. <clears throat> oh, feck. You know, little people are just normal people like us. I know. They just, you know, they're they're regular people. We shouldn't make fun of them. Get back in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not their fault they have funny, stumpy <laughs> arms and big, fat heads, but... <laughs> You might need to cut that out. <laughs> no, actually, I'm just quoting what Norm MacDonald said on going in one time. Anyhow, I bet you anything, Brad has a good sense of humor about it. So I hope so. And I would too, because yes. you can make fun of me if you want. I'm a big ogre, like, like Shrek or something. <clears throat> he's Canadian. <laughs> anyhow, let's watch. Okay, all right, Let, let's just do this. Let's watch it and see what he's like. I'm looking forward to this. If you can't take a joke, my friends. Then you're in the wrong spot. Jokes are jokes. Yeah. And and I will take it as much as I dish it out. Oh. Something else popped in my head. There, that means two I, things. I, I, won't, I won't repeat it. <laughs> I will take it. Oh, yes. What the <laughs> fuck? What are you, Posh Spice? <laughs> All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Fred Williams! Thank you, Fred. How can you not laugh at that? <laughs> He's so mobile. How are you feeling out there? <laughs> Hell yeah, you guys are happy. You guys are psyched. Of course you're happy. You know right now your story beats any one of your friends, no matter what the hell they're doing tonight. <laughs> They'll call you up tomorrow. Should have hung out with us, man. We went out to a strip club. They had a one-armed stripper. She had a cartwheel. It was ridiculous. <laughs> what kind of lame shit did you do? Oompa Loompa made me laugh. Fuck off. You win. <laughs> Oompa Loompa. Exactly. You're happy, but of course you're happy. You've got a little person in front of you right now. People are always happy when they see midgets. You can't help it. A lot of you don't know who I am, don't know what TV shows I've been on, but I walk on stage, you're like, this is going to be good. <laughs> you see a midget, you're happy. You can't help it. No one's ever seen a midget and yelled out, well, now my day has gone to hell. That has not happened. <laughs> you 
you see this, you're smiling, you're laughing, you know it's a good shot, you got a parade and some candy coming your way. You're happy <laughs> as hell. Doesn't matter, you can get fired from your job, find out your wife is blowing some other dude, you walk down the street, you see me, you're just... <laughs> <laughs> That's why we are not using midgets properly in this country. <laughs> we have normal jobs. We should not have normal jobs. They should be giving midgets to cancer patients. <laughs> How awesome would that be? Sorry, sir, I discovered you have cancer. Damn it, here's your midget. <laughs> Fuck you! <yeah! laughs> A lot of you didn't like that joke at first. <laughs> then I finished it, you're like, we, we will absolutely support that charity. We will support that. We should do a 5K. We should do a 5K. <laughs> They're dwarves. We should do a two and a half K. We should do a two and a half K. <laughs> and that's true. I do make people happier. I did a show one time, a woman came up to me after the show and said, Brad, you're funny, I run a children's hospital. I would love it if you came down to the children's hospital, entertained the children, brought them some smiles. I said, yes, that's perfect. I mean, hell, you guys have known me now for a few minutes and you know my act is perfect for the fucking kids, all right? <laughs> So I say, I'll do it. I go to the children's hospital. I'm exaggerating nothing. I walk into that door. A kid walks up to me, puts his hand on my shoulder and goes, don't worry, they'll fix you here. <laughs> it's true. It Apparently you're not allowed to karate chop the sick kid, okay? You're not allowed to do that. Why did you, I'm there on my Saturday giving up my free time to help him. He's got to piss on my self-esteem. And, and it happened over and over again. I was walking on the hospital. There would be all these kids. I mean, God bless them. They'd be walking around, dragging their oxygen tanks behind them like that. Then they would look up and see me and go, Jesus, glad I don't have that. Oh my God, that would suck. <laughs> but I get it. I understand. I understand why people are excited when they see a little person. I totally get it because when I'm walking around and I see another little person, I get excited too. <laughs> I do. Then you guys see two of us. You get ridiculously excited. Like, oh my God, there's two! I hope they do a trick. I, I really hope they do a trick. I do, I get excited when I see another little person. I'm not thinking about this constantly. It's not always on my mind. I don't walk around all day in my head, just I'm a midget, 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 I'm a midget. The way you walk, it feels awesome. I know, if your life had a DVR, you would have all 30 seconds back right there. I'm a midget, I'm a midget, I'm a midget, I'm a midget. So, uh, and, and when I'm walking around and I see a little person, I get happy. Now, if the other dwarf I see is a male, if I see a male little person, I get excited. But at the same time, I know I have to fight him. <laughs> I don't know why that is. I don't want to fight him. He doesn't want to fight me. But we lock eyes. We're like, it's go time. Like, why? Maybe dwarves are like Highlanders. Like, there can be only one. I don't know. <laughs> Now, if I'm walking around and I see another little person and it happens to be a female, if I see a female little person, I get excited. You guys get quiet. <laughs> you see two little people come together. You're just like, oh my God! <laughs> this is like National Geographic Channel come to life. <laughs> Shh, don't say anything. You'll scare him. It's his mating season. <laughs> Now, you would think that that might offend me. It does not offend me. I'm going to fuck that female little person, okay? It's happening. When it comes to dwarf pussy, I am a Dyson vacuum. I don't miss a damn thing. It's happening. But Brad, she's a woman. She has a choice. What if she doesn't want to sleep with you? Are you kidding me? I'm in the top five midgets in show business. She's fucking me, okay? It's happening. I'm top five. I'm not number one. I don't have delusions of grandeur, okay? I know where I am, all right? Number one, Peter Dinklage from Game of Thrones. I yeah. love that too. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. Great show. Number two is this guy named Wee Man from Jackass. He's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I know Some of you know who he is. Some of you are just now realizing that I am not Wee Man from Jackass. <laughs> 
you idiot. <laughs> Number three is a guy named Warwick Davis. He was in a movie called oh, yeah. Willow, an HBO Willow. show called Life is Short. Oh, you yeah, you know, Willow. Number four. Uh, I'm number four, it's not bad. And at number five is the chick. Damn it, what the hell is the chick's name? No, the dwarf chick. Oh, yeah. Justin Bieber. <laughs> that is a hot bitch. I want to do bad things to that woman. She is cute. <laughs> Obviously, that's a joke. Uh, but I said that one night at a comedy club in Hollywood, California. I didn't know this. Bieber was in the audience that night, and he did not like that joke. He did not like it. He walked up to me after the show. He's like, you're a son of a bitch, hey, That was not very nice of you to say to me. I love that that's a true story. Holy fuck, that was good. Okay, he's funny. Yeah, we'll have to finish okay. that show then. We should do two episodes. <laughs> okay, let's do the second part. Okay, we're gonna do that. I do, because that's the thing, is my jokes are a lot of times true stories. People ask me all the time, Brad, you're a comedian. How do you write your material? I don't. Here's how I write jokes. Step one, be a dwarf. Step two, wait. <laughs> funny shit's gonna happen to you. I never know when. It's not like I look down with, oh, three o'clock, funny shit's about to happen. No, you know, it's not like that. It just happens randomly. Yeah. Like not too long ago, I took my mom out to lunch. Uh, now, before I go on with this joke, uh, just know that my mom is not a little person like me. And my dad, not a dwarf. No, I know. We don't have to all come from the same tribe. Uh, <laughs> you can't like drive down the street and be like, which house do the dwarves live in? <laughs> it's the mushroom with the door in it. <laughs> So my mom is driving, I'm in the passenger seat, not a booster, fuck off. <laughs> I'm the normal chair, like a big boy. And my mom comes behind this guy, and this guy's trying to turn really down a one-way street, but he's going the wrong way down the one-way street. And this is causing all sorts of traffic, and people are honking, getting very upset. My mom is right behind him, she is polite. She's a prim and proper Southern Belle from Savannah, Georgia. And she looks at the guy, she goes, uh, excuse me there, sir. I don't believe you can make a left-hand turn at this particular intersection. I know you hear that. You want lemonade right now, don't you? Like, that's my mom. And then this guy proceeds to look at my mother and goes, why don't you shut the fuck up? I'm killing you right now, okay? I'm killing you. You say that to my mom? That's my mom. I love my mom. She gave birth to me. And just so you know, giving birth to a dwarf is not easy. It's not like you just sneeze and we fly out of there, okay? Like, the doctor's not sitting there with a the catcher's mitt, like, you know, like that, that doesn't happen. No, it is very hard to give birth to a little person. When I was born, my head was about the same size as it is right now, okay? Do you understand what that means? And my mom never complained. She never once complained. My dad, he complains about it all the time. He tells me, like, you realize that was the first pussy you ever tore up? Oh my yeah, God. that's my mom. She gave birth to me. I will defend this woman. I will die for this woman. So I get out of the car and I start yelling at this guy, what the hell did you just say? What the hell? Get out here. Get out here, you son of a bitch. Let's go, asshole. And he gets out of the car. I'm like, oh shit, this is actually happening right now. Okay, uh, <laughs> this is going to come as a shock to you people. Uh, I don't know how to fight. <laughs> no such thing as midget UFC, okay? <laughs> There should be midget UFC. <laughs> that would be awesome. Like me and Wee Man in a ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese. Like, Let's get it on. Uh, <laughs> it's not. So I don't know how to fight. The only fighting I know is stuff I learned from video games in the 90s. This guy's charging at me, and I have some weird instinct. I just look at him and I go, Hadouken. <laughs> I, I just say Hadouken. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, I will explain. There was a video game in the 90s called Street Fighter 2. Okay, Street Fighter. Yeah. There were two characters in that game. They wouldn't just punch and kick. No, they would yell out Hadouken and they would throw a fireball from their hands. A fireball, because that might be useful in a fight. Punch, kick, fireball. It works. And that's right, I'm like, I don't know, I just yelled it out. You think I'm crazy, but this shows you how much people don't know about little people. I yelled out, Hadouken, this guy flinched, and then like ran away. <laughs> he ran away. 
Do you understand what that means? That means that when I yelled out Hadouken, this guy thought, well, he is a dwarf. He can probably throw a fireball. I'm booking it. At that point, I would give all my money, all of my money, to be there when this guy told his friends this story. <laughs> No, bro, you have no idea what happened to me, man. I yelled at this woman today, she got pissed off, she had a button on her car, an attack midget just like right out of her car like that. An attack midget starts throwing fireballs at me. I had to block it and like, dodge, do that. I didn't even know they had attack midgets. I have seen every episode of MTV Cribs. You never saw a fitted set like, yo, this is my Mercedes and it comes with a motherfucking attack midget right there. It never happened. And you would assume that from Mercedes or BMW, sure, but based on what I saw today, let me tell you right now, Kia has stepped their game up. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my God. I, don't know, I don't know when these things are gonna happen. Common everyday activities can turn into crazy stories at any time. I, I was having lunch not too long ago with my best friends, Adam, and we're at a McDonald's. I know, I've made it in show business. <laughs> and. Now, this particular McDonald's had a, uh, a, a play place attached to it, all right? And me and Adam were just sitting there, we're talking. All of a sudden, this kid, I don't know if he thought that I was threatening his hood or like invading his turf, but he just runs out of the play place. He's got a ball from the ball pit, sees me and just hucks this and psh, nails me right in the head. Can't miss this son of a bitch, okay? <laughs> so I pop up, I'm like, what the hell? I see it's a kid, I don't care. I have street cred, I gotta defend myself. I'm going after the kid. I start walking after him. Now Adam, my friend, he's a tall guy, but he essentially works for me, so he's like, all right, I guess we're beating up seven-year-olds today. He's walking after him. Now this particular play place must have had an incident of some kind because they had a security guard. And he sees Adam coming towards me. He's like, hey, you can't come in here. And he looks at me, he's like, yeah, you can come on here. Yeah, that's cool. I'm not offended. I just got the green light to whoop some ass. So I run into the play place. I look around. I see the kid. But the other kids that are there in the play place, they see me walk in. They start clapping and cheering and getting all happy. I'm like, what the? And then I realize they think I'm a new mascot. Like, there's the Hamburglar and Ronald McDonald, and now there's the McNugget midget, apparently. <laughs> I'ma make it rain, sweet and sour thoughts, you know? And, and now they're clapping, but I see the kid, and he sees me, we lock eyes, and he turns around and he runs up the slide. Now he's in the tubes, because he thinks he's safe in the tubes. You dumb fuck. <laughs> you are not safe in those tubes. I am four foot four. I can run in those tubes, okay? <laughs> I get in the tubes, I'm Super Mario, and he got the star. I'm good. <laughs> So I run up the tube, I see the kid, I run right up to him, I grab him, I start dragging him out by his little stride right, okay? I'm dragging him out. Yes, I know what stride rights are, I sometimes have to wear them myself, okay? <laughs> Not all the time, sometimes you guys get sexy shoes, you guys got real sexy shoes tonight, these are good. I don't always wear these, sometimes I gotta do shows and I got lights blinking from my shit. Not that sexy. <laughs> now I'm yelling at the kid, why'd you throw the ball at me? That was not very nice, you don't do that. As I'm yelling at him, the kid's dad is running up behind me, pissed off. I don't see the dad. I'm just yelling at the kid. But Adam, my friend, he sees the dad. He does what any good guy friend would do. He goes, let's see what happens here. <laughs> yeah. The dad runs up, grabs me by the shoulder, hard, whips me around, sees my face and goes, I was not expecting that. <laughs> like, what were you expecting? I think he thought I was a kid, then when he whipped me around, saw my beard, and was like, I was not expecting that. <laughs> it's like, I'm 30, you shouldn't say that to another man. The only time you should say that is if you're making out with a chick, you pull off her skirt, she's got a dick. I was not expecting that. <laughs> so now the dad's in this weird circumstance. He looks at me, he looks at his kid, he looks at me, he looks back at his kid, he goes, I can do nothing for you, boy. And he starts walking up. <laughs> That's what I know I've won. I got away with it. And this dad wanted to hit me. He wanted to hit me, but you can't punch a dwarf. You punch a dwarf, that's a hate crime. All right? And I got away with it. That's the best part about being a little person. The best part is that you can get away with stuff. I get away with stuff all the time because yeah. I'm adorable. <laughs> <laughs> if 
You're cute, you can do things. I can steal and it's fine. It's fine, I've done it. I was at a grocery store not too long ago. I was there with my buddy. He dared me to steal something. Your buddy dares you to do something, you gotta do it. So I go to the cookie aisle. I get a crap load of Keebler cookies. I put them on my shoulder and I just start walking out of that place with the Keebler cookies. Now. The Keebler elves. This little 17 year old clerk sees me, walks up, he's like, oh, excuse me, sir, are you gonna pay for those? And like a boss, I just look at this guy, I go, nah, bro, my family makes these. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> of course he let me go. In his mind, he's like, yeah, he's here doing quality control. I can't stop that from happening. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. This stuff happens to me all the time. It happens in my normal life. It happens during shows. I had a show not too long ago. A group of four women came to my show. And one of the women in this group of four has something that's called achondrophobia. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's a fear of little people, all right? And that shit is real, okay? It's real, and it's not, oh, he's kind of creepy. It's more like, what the fuck is that? Okay, like, it's nuts. Now, here's the best part of the story. The three friends brought this woman to my show, sat in the front row. All of them knew she had achondrophobia. And they were all just sitting there like, this is gonna be a hoot, oh my God. This is gonna be so good. Now, I'm all for a good practical joke. I love a good prank. Just warn me, okay? Yeah. Send me a tweet, an email, something, so I know what's gonna happen. If I, if I would have known that this woman was afraid of little people, I would have run on stage wearing a Viking helmet. Just, like, I would have had a good time. But I didn't know. So I walk out on stage like I'm gonna do my normal show. I reach up to grab the microphone. Before I even touch the microphone, this woman stands up and in front of the entire audience just goes, Jesus Christ! <laughs> You imagine? Remember, I don't know why she's doing that. I'm trying to do a show. A woman yells, Jesus Christ. I start looking around. Is Tim Tebow here? <laughs> so I look at her. I'm like, sweetheart, what is wrong with you? And she goes, I'm afraid of little people. <laughs> all right? First of all, fuck you. Okay? <laughs> How could you be afraid? <laughs> you be afraid of little people? It's not like this shit is contagious, all right? I can't walk up to you, bite your knee, and you go, I'm melting. <laughs> so I asked her, I said, why are you afraid of little people? I'm gonna tell you what she said. Just please understand this is what she said, okay? Not what I said. I didn't go home, I didn't write this down like, oh, I think this would be really funny. I don't think this is funny, but it's what happened. So here we go. I say, why are you afraid of little people? She goes, every time I see a little person, I just know they're gonna rape me. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that happened at a comedy show. A comedy show. And then her three friends were looking at me like, you can make that funny, can't you? No, I cannot make that funny. What's my comeback? You're not my type. Are you kidding me? So I look at this woman. I understand it's a delicate situation. So I look at her, I'm like, sweetheart, I get it. What you just said is the most horrific thing that could ever happen to another human being. But what you have to realize is that what you just said is impossible, okay? It's impossible. It can't happen. There's no such thing as midget rape, okay? <laughs> Does not exist. Now, ladies, if you're in the audience right now and you're one of these people and you're fearing midget rape, just know there is one move you can do, one move you can do that will stop all forms of midget rape. It works 100% of the time. Here's the move. Just, Some of you are waiting for another move. No, that's it. That's all I do. Palm, forehead, bam. Like, you do that, I'm stuck waving. Just like, ah. <laughs> oh, wow, Brad. That's insane that you met one person that has achondrophobia. No. I've met quite a few oh, no. people that have it. It's pretty common, which is weird. I've even met one celebrity that has it. Don't worry, I'll tell you who it is. Okay. John Stamos. Oh, yeah. Yes, 
that John the Stamos. House. Yeah, he's got achondrophobia. I didn't know that until I did a show with Bob Saget, his co-star from Full House. I did a charity show with him. Saget rolls that? up to the show Blackhead. with John Stamos oh, okay. and Dave Coulier. They are still all friends, which is awesome. I'm sitting in my dressing room. All of a sudden, Saget bursts into my dressing room. He's like, Brad, you have to come meet John Stamos. <laughs> And I'm sitting there like, well, yeah, I love the show Full House. Uncle Jesse, Jesse and the Rippers, the catchphrase, have mercy. I would love to meet John Stamos. He goes, Brad, you don't get it. Stamos is terrified of little people. <laughs> then I know what I must do, Bob Saget. <laughs> the plan goes into action. Saget runs into his dressing room. He starts talking to Stamos, distracting him. As soon as Stamos turns his back, I know that's my cue. I run in, I see Stamos, I run right up, I grab his leg, I start humping. <laughs> And this is, this is not a comedic hump. I am hate fucking his leg, okay? I'm just, I'm gonna tell you this right now and understand this, John Stamos screams like a bitch, okay? He does. He looked down, saw me, like just start freaking out. And he starts kicking his leg like that. Like he starts kicking his leg like I'm some horny cock or spaniel or something, but you're not getting me off because I have little pug arms and when I latch on, I fucking latch on. So I'm good. I am riding his leg like it's an out of control fire hose. Dude, th this is the rodeo. I'm surviving for eight seconds, okay? <laughs> While this is happening, Saget is on the floor laughing. <laughs> and then in a moment that I could not write, if you gave me a thousand opportunities, Dave Coulier walks into the dressing room, sees me humping Stamos's leg, and without missing a beat, just goes, hey, Brad, cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> I can die now. Yeah. Holy shit. This You're is right. my life. It's insane. <laughs> stuff happens here. Stuff happens when I travel. Stuff happened when I took a trip recently to Brazil. I went to Brazil for the World Cup, and that was amazing. It was an unreal experience. But I'm going to tell you guys something right now. Brazil is scary. Okay? It's scary, because I thought it was all like It's not. It's scary. Like, black guys from Detroit are like, I ain't going to Brazil, motherfucker. Like, I didn't know it was scary until I applied for a Brazilian visa. Then they handed me a pamphlet. This pamphlet said, five easy steps to survive in Brazil. Yeah, they don't do that when you go to Italy, okay? It would be one step. Make sure you wear a helmet when you're on the scooter. Ciao. Like, that would be it. <laughs> Not Brazil! Step number one, make sure at all times you carry on you a fake wallet and a fake cell phone for when you get mugged. Oh. Key word there, when you get mugged. Not if, when. This is gonna happen. Step number two, make sure you blend in. Try not to stand out in any way. How do I blend? This does not blend, like okay? Child. I am the world's largest keychain. Do you understand that? <laughs> this doesn't, the only way I'm blending is if I get off the airplane, there's 500 of my people going, that's it. So I go to Brazil and I got mugged. I did. Yeah, I got mugged. I got mugged after the USA Germany game. I wa yeah, I watched the game. I go out to the corner, my friends say, hey Brad, we're gonna go get cab, wait here, we'll bring the cab to you. I say, fantastic, I'm waiting there, all of a sudden, something long and hard jams into me, and at first I'm kinda like, ooh, somebody liked me. <laughs> uh, if I look over, nope, that's a gun, that's a gun, and the guy goes, wallet, phone, now! But then I realize, I read the pamphlet. I have a fake wallet and a fake phone on me. I'm almost excited to be mugged. I'm like, oh my God, I've trained for this. <laughs> I hand the fake wallet, the fake phone. He takes it, he runs away. My friends see what happened. They run up to be very concerned. Brad, oh my God, are you okay? We saw what happened, are you hurt? I'm laughing the entire time. They're like, Brad, why are you laughing? I'm like, because I read the pamphlet. I gave him the fake wallet and the fake phone. And three days before I came to Brazil, I was really bored. I took the fake phone. I took about 38 pictures of my dick. <laughs> I did. I was bored one day. I'm like, click, 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 click. 
I got it. Now I'm just picturing this guy going home. I got a cell phone. I got a cell phone. What the fuck? Why does a dwarf have a bigger dick than me? America. He'll just go to the next one. Exactly. Good to remember. If we go away, take everything. It's fun to travel, man. Yeah. It's fun. Thankfully, I have a cool job where I get to travel for a living, I get to perform. And the most rewarding time I ever had in my life was not too long ago. I got to perform in the Middle East for the soldiers. I did a USO tour over there. Oh, it was the best. Soldiers are the best audiences. They don't give a crap about political correctness. They just want you to laugh. They want you to be honest. They want you to be true. Yeah. That I mean, They have to have a good sense of humor. You do a job that serious, you have to have a good sense of humor. I get off the C-130 plane in Afghanistan. Group of five soldiers there to meet me. They walk up like, Mr. Williams, we're so happy you're here. I'm like, fuck yeah, you guys want to laugh, right? They're like, no, you're a midget. We want to do some fun shit with you. <laughs> oh. Right, like was there a meeting the day before, like some commanding officers on stage, we have a dwarf coming on base tomorrow. We need some ideas for some fun shit to do. Henderson, what you got? Do we have any large cannons? Good idea, Henderson. I ask him, I'm like, guys, what sort of fun shit do you want to do? They say, we want to take you on a Black Hawk helicopter. I'm like, yes. I'm going on that. And I tell that to my friends, they're like, Brad, weren't you scared? No, you have to understand who I am, the life I've lived. I'm the guy that when I go to Six Flags, I can't ride half of their shit. <laughs> and now the US government just said, you see that death machine? Do you wanna hop on? Erection, I'm good. <laughs> So we go to fly in a Black Hawk helicopter. Now, before you fly in one of these things, they don't just let you go. They have to put gear on you. They have to put a helmet and a vest. And apparently, there's not a lot of midgets in the military. <laughs> Helmets and vests are not made by Oshkosh. They are not made by Oshkosh. First of all, the guy brings me out a helmet. He assumes that because I'm a little person, I have a tiny head. Wrong. I do not have a tiny head. I have a big fucking head, okay? I don't have dreams. I have movies, okay? <laughs> They, they bring out this little helmet, they're pulling on my head. It doesn't fit, they're pulling it down, it doesn't fit. They have to get an extender strap for the chin and buckle it and buckle it and buckle it. Now the chin fits. That doesn't change the size of the helmet. The helmet is still sitting on top of my head, not protecting shit. It's not even a helmet at this point. It is a war yarmulke. I'm thinking to myself, great, I'm going into a country that has a lot of pissed off Muslims and they dressed me like G.I. Jew. This is gonna go well. Thank you, smart people, for laughing at that joke. <laughs> Some of you got it. Some of you guys are like, wait, Jews and Muslims don't get along? Kill yourself, all right? End it. Nobody likes you. <laughs> so now they get the helmet to fit. Now they bring out the vest. Now the vest would be a vest on any one of you nice people. On me, this was a bulletproof moo moo. Okay? <laughs> this thing went down below my knees. Below my knees. And they told me, run to the helicopter. Like, oh, right. I'm going to run to the helicopter. I'm going to look like a badass. I did not look like a badass. I looked like a fucking penguin. Like, I was running like that shit the entire time. 100 yards. 100 yards of this. The only thing that was missing was Morgan Freeman narrating the damn thing. Was... And now we see the little people make their way to the Black Hawk helicopter. <laughs> As I'm running, I trip and fall in the middle of the runway. I know, I could end the joke right there if I wanted to. Dwarf down, hilarious. As I'm laying down, one of the soldiers yells at me, Mr. Williams, you gotta get up. This area is surrounded by snipers. If you stay down, one of them is gonna take you out. Not scared. No, not scared of snipers. Two reasons, one, Damn near impossible shot, okay? <laughs> Two, you're not even gonna get the shot off. Could you imagine? You're a sniper, you're up in the hills, been there for days, you're scanning for the enemy, and all of a sudden you come across me? You're just up there like, okay, where the American, I kill the American, where the American, I kill the American, where the American, I kill the American. Oh. <laughs> I'll command you, get the fuck over here right now, I'll command. <laughs> 
Ahmed, get the fuck over here right now. You have no idea what I'm looking at right now, Ahmed. No idea. If I were to describe to you what I'm looking at right now, I would only be able to describe it as happiness. I'm looking at happiness right now, Ahmed. When I die, fuck the 72 virgins. I want one of those. <laughs> so now I get up, make my way to the Black Hawk helicopter. Now, Black Hawk helicopter is about yay high, all right? I can't get in that. I'm wearing the Mumu vest. I can't. I look at the soldier, I'm like, hey bro, can you help me out? He says, no problem. Pulls a lever, a little handicap helper step. <laughs> Flies out, sweet. Except for the helper step was about that freaking high. <laughs> Still can't get in. I'd ask this soldier to do something that I swore, as a little person, I would never ask anyone to do, ever. I look at him like, all right, bro. You're gonna have to toss me. <laughs> and the smile he got on his face, like, this is what I signed up for! And he grabs me, he could just throw me in real quick. We would've been done, but no. He had to enjoy himself, he picks me up. He just goes, one, <laughs> two, asshole! He finally picks me up, he tosses me in. I get in, sit down, buckle up, good to go. But before we start flying, pilot turns around. Pilot has a little speech for us. And this is the speech that I hear right before I take my first helicopter flight in Afghanistan. Pilot looks at us and goes, all right, Mr. Williams, this is Bagram Air Force Base, Afghanistan. Some shit goes on here. We don't anticipate anything to happen, but something might happen, and we do have to prepare you for such a scenario. What sometimes occurs, these particular helicopters, they get fired upon by something called an RPG, rock repel grenade. You might know it as a bazooka. If this is to happen, you'll hear the words fire in the hole, followed by our machine gunner on board return fire. If you hear our gun go off, it is no longer a combat simulation. It is a real-life war scenario with real-life consequences. We'll do everything in our power to keep you alive. We'll do some evasive maneuvers here up in a fetal position, you'll be fine. <laughs> I stopped listening after you said bazooka. <laughs> now I'm scared. Now I'm terrified. But I can't show fear. I'm on a helicopter with a bunch of 18 and 19 year old badass Marines. I can't be a 30 year old man like, I don't think this is a good idea. I can't do that. So I'm like, all right, Brad, just shut up. Try to be cool. I'm glad I had that attitude, because we took off. Oh my God, this was so much fun. We start flying over the base. Soldiers are describing the base to me, the function of the buildings. I'm cracking jokes, they're laughing. We're having a great time. Then we flew outside of the base. And you wanna know what happens when a Black Hawk helicopter flies outside of the base? You have to test fire the machine gun to make sure it works. Eh, they didn't tell me that, no. They told me, hear the gun go off, kiss your ass goodbye. That's what I heard. So we get outside the base, out of nowhere, you just hear, fire in the hole! I had my first period right there on the damn end. I was looking around like I hope Kotex comes in camouflage. This is a heavy flow day. <laughs> I had fun there, man. I had fun. I learned a lot. Learned a lot. I thought we only had American troops over there. Not the case. We have a lot of different soldiers from a lot of different countries over there. I got to meet and talk to these brave young men and women. And oh man, ladies, now I know what you mean when you say you love accents, because, yeah. <laughs> I talked to this one British soldier for like an hour and I'm just staring at him like, don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> and it was that sexy British accent, that South London, Jason Statham type British accent. Oh my God, ladies, you could be on a date tonight, but if some guy taps you on the shoulder, you turn around and all you hear is, Hey, I was looking at you from across the room. I thought to myself, is a pig looking better? I did. Let me tell you what. I'll go BMW 325R, pop right side. We can go out there, shake your rotten and back here in 30 minutes. That's why they call me the transporter, bitch. Hey. By the way, guys, I just preheated every oven in the room. You're welcome. <laughs> That's a sexy accent. Now, just because you have an accent, do not think it is automatically sexy. There is a hierarchy to these things, okay? British, up here. Australian, up here. Indian. <laughs> That's the same. 
ladies, you're not going to have the same reaction if you turn around and all you see is, excuse me, my little delicate desert flower. <laughs> I was looking at you from across the room and might I say, you are so exquisitely beautiful that if you were to be in my country, you would be more sacred than a cow. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I would like to do some bad things to you. I would, if it were up to me, I would take you home, split your legs, and I would eat you like curly. Yes, I would like to do. What? I cannot talk dirty to a woman just because I'm Indian. Let me tell you something. I can talk dirty. I will say some filthy things. I want to bend you over, grab your head, and whisper something soft and sexy in your ear like, who's your customer service representative? <laughs> Who's your customer service representative? You want me put on hold? I will put you on hold! <laughs> the only good part is that once he finishes up, he's like, thank you, come again. <laughs> <laughs> I love my job. I get to do this for a living. I get to travel. Traveling's great. And don't get me wrong, it's hard sometimes. You know, you gotta leave your family. I hate leaving my family right now. Because uh, two months ago, I became an uncle for the very first time. Yeah, uncle. I didn't do anything, but yeah. Uh, my sister gave birth to a, a healthy baby boy. His name is Liam. And like, I saw her pregnant for the whole nine months, but I didn't really think about it until he was born. And then my brother-in-law comes in with Liam. And he looks at me and goes, hey, congratulations. You're now Uncle Brad. And he hands me Liam. And I look at him. I didn't know what love was. I had no idea. And now I'm staring at him going, oh, this is what this is. I love you. I love you unconditionally and without prejudice. And you have done absolutely nothing to deserve this love. <laughs> nothing. Your life resume reads shit once. That is it. But I love you. And I'm having this moment of realization of the most powerful emotion in human existence. And my dad from the back of the room just yells out, you know he's going to be wearing your clothes in like two weeks? <laughs> my dad's pretty funny. <laughs> Family's laughing, mom's crying. She's a grandma for the first time. She walks out to me, she's like, Brad, when are you gonna have one? When are you gonna have one, son? You will be an excellent father. You'll be a good provider for a family. You should absolutely have yourself a child. I don't want one, okay? I don't want kids. Now, if you want kids, have kids, trying to have kids, good for you. Best thing you'll ever do in your life. But understand, I don't want one because if I have a kid, 75% chance that kid's gonna be tall. I don't want anything that by age three can fucking kill me, all right? <laughs> How do you even discipline that kid? You're like, you're in timeout, you're in timeout, dad. <laughs> I'm walking away like, you're right, son. I shouldn't have said that to you. That was not right. I'm not ready. I'm seeing what my sister has to go through. I'm not ready for that. She doesn't sleep at all. She spends a lot of money. She had to change her house. She had to do horrible things to her home. She had to put up baby gates. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Fuck baby gates. <laughs> baby gates. I hate baby gates, okay? You guys know what baby gates are, right? You have a room in your house, you don't want the baby to go in, you put up a little baby gate, stops the baby from going into that room of the house, great. It also stops midgets from going into that fucking room, okay? It does, it works, I know this, I've been cock-blocked by a baby gate before, cock-blocked. I got this woman back to her house, she had a kid, she had the baby gate, she's tall, she does little step-over moves like that, she's good to go. Meanwhile, I'm stuck on the other side like a mech steer at the border like, que pasa? <laughs> I didn't get laid that night. No woman wants to fuck a guy after she looks down the hallway and just sees. And I tell that to my buddy. He's like, come on, bro. You're a comedian. You're supposed to have a comeback. You're supposed to have a snappy comeback for every situation. What's the comeback for when a baby gate slows your roll? What do you say? I can't just look at her and be like, boost. 
No woman's ever picked up her date like, you're gonna fuck me so good tonight. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I didn't get laid that night. But don't. Don't feel sorry for me. Don't be in the audience right now like, ah, Brad didn't get laid. Please, okay? I do all right. Now, I understand this is not the stereotype of what women draw up in their minds as being attractive. I get that, but I'm a realist, okay? I don't want those women. I want the women that came to my show tonight, sat down, saw me run out on stage and went, oh, bucket list. All right, that's what I want. That's what I want. If you're one of those women, oh, you made a good decision. You made an excellent decision. Every woman should fuck a midget at least once in their life, okay? You should treat yourself, okay? Treat yourself. Because we can do moves that these tall guys cannot do. See, it got quiet because the women were like, oh my God, what can you do? Uh, oh my God. I'll tell you, ladies, straight up. You haven't experienced life till you've been fucked doggy style by a little person, all right? Way better than the tall guys. I know what the tall guys have to do. Tall guys, they get down their knees like that. They start off with that move right there. They start off badass. They start off like a champ, and that goes on for a good nine seconds, okay, about nine seconds. <laughs> that right leg just starts getting a little sore. <laughs> that thigh starts jamming it up. You start losing thrust right there. I know what happens. Then every guy does the same move. They throw up the one leg, just like that. They throw up the one damn leg, just like that. That's when the woman starts freaking out. Oh my God, he's trying a new position. Bitch, that's a cramp. That's not a new position. <laughs> That's what happens when you guys are doing doggy style. When I'm doing doggy style, I don't get tired because I'm standing up, ladies and gentlemen. That's what I'm doing right here. And I am aggressive. I am aggressive in bed. Look, my right hand instinctively went into a fist right now, okay? Instinctively. You want to know why? Because when I fuck doggy style, I'm pulling hair, all right? I pull hair, and I'm good at it, all right? A lot of guys do not know how to pull hair. You're grabbing it by the end. Why the hell are you grabbing her hair by the end? That hurts her. Stop doing it. You want to know how to pull hair? Pay attention. This is what you do, okay? Take your hand like this. Spread your fingers like that with the very bottom of your woman's head right there. Then you track up the woman's head just like that. And when you get to right about there, you grab as much hair as you can. You fucking crack that shit. All right? <laughs> you might even miss it. I think he's going to get laid tonight. Women love it. Unless you're fucking a black woman, then do not pull that woman's hair. <laughs> Never pull a black woman's hair. She will cut you. Right? <laughs> so you guys are learning stuff right now. <laughs> We're communicating. That's the important part. That's what a lot of people don't do in their relationships. They don't communicate. You gotta be able to communicate. Talk. Tell us what you want. Ladies. Tell your man exactly what we need to do to please you. Exactly what we need to do. Details. Don't just look at your pussy like it's a Rubik's Cube. Like, solve that one, fucker. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I get why you do it. You do it because you assume it's easy to please you. For you, very easy to please a man. Every guy wants the same thing. Doesn't matter where you go. You could be in the deep south. You know, I dare you would I want a blow job. You know what I mean? Go up to Connecticut. My God, love me. I can go for blow job. Like, same <laughs> shit. We could drop you off in Africa and be like, I'm bum bum boop it. Blow job, like shit. It's easy. Having sex with a dude is like walking into an Ikea with an Allen wrench. Like, oh my god, this works on everything. It's fucking easy. Talk. And I say that, but a lot of women pull this line and they go, oh no, Brad, I can't tell my man what I really want. If I told my man what I really want in bed, <gasps> I would scare him. <laughs> try it. Try and, try and scare your man. Try and scare your man. Let me know how that works out. No, no, no. My man is not that freaky. Bullshit. Bullshit. Okay? <laughs> Bullshit. Your man's not that freaky. You only think that, ladies, because he hasn't shown his freaky side. Because you're not that freaky. Understand this, ladies. I'm going to say this one time. Your man is only as freaky as he thinks he's allowed to be. Okay? <laughs> that is it. We know. 
We know you have your line of freakiness, and we will go right up to your line of freakiness, and we stop at your line of freakiness. Now, every now and then, we will dance over the line, okay? We'll dance over the line. We don't jump over the line. No, 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 we just dance over the line. We just dance over the Nothing crazy, nothing insane, just like something simple, like doing doggy style, and all right, let's try it out. It is my birthday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing is just mm, just like that, just like that. <laughs> By the way, if you know what I did there, I love you. Okay. <laughs> I love you. I did that one night and a woman yelled out, that's called the bus driver. <laughs> A thumb. What's her man doing? <laughs> mm, Brad, you don't get it. My man's just not that freaky. All right, try this then. One night, just go up to your man. Be like, hey, baby, tonight it's all about you. Whatever you want, I will do. I'll not object. I'll not say no. I'll not say yes, but secretly harbor ill feelings towards you, which I'm gonna bring up in a fight that we're gonna have for about six to eight months from this date today. I've already planned it. No. Excuse me. Whatever you want tonight, I will do. Tonight, baby, I am yours. Ladies, if you ever say that to your man, get a helmet. All right? <laughs> It's going crazy that night, okay? There's gonna be whips, there's gonna be chains. At some point, a closet door will open, I'm gonna run out. All right, I'm here to help, let's do this, let's make it happen. <laughs> We're freaky, okay? There's a reason why something called the Devil's Threesome exists, okay? All right, you guys got quiet. You don't know what the Devil's Threesome is. Okay, okay, it's okay, I'll tell you. Regular threesome, two women, one man. Gift from God. Devil's Threesome, two guys. One girl. Mm. All right, a couple whores in the audience. Awesome, that's awesome. You guys are down, perfect. See, that's the thing, and I'm not judging you. I'm just saying, like, most women, they, they say that. They're like, oh yeah, my man, he wanted to do that. He wanted to be in the devil's threesome. No, he did not. We did not want that. No man wants that. No man is having sex with a gorgeous woman like, you know what would make this better? More dicks. <laughs> That's true, I agree with that. We do it because we just want to make you happy, ladies. And I know this because I've been in a devil's threesome before, okay? Yeah. Don't worry, I'll tell you the story. Right. I was at a bar one night with my friend, just hanging out. We look over, we see a gorgeous woman sitting all by herself. And guys, back me up. You never see gorgeous women just by themselves. We're like, oh my God, we have to go talk to her. One of us has got to get her. So we both go up. We start talking to this woman. After about 30 minutes, she goes, oh my God, I am taking both of you home. And we both looked at her and went, why? <laughs> she said, because it's always been my fantasy. I want two men to turn me into the London Bridge. <laughs> My friend is five foot ten. This is gonna be a leading tower of Pisa, bitch, okay? <laughs> she's like, I don't care, let's go. So I looked at my friend and said, listen, she's hot. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this one time, and then we will never speak of it again, <laughs> not to each other, not to anyone. <laughs> so we go back yeah, to her place <laughs> to have the two and a half some. <laughs> oh wait. And then, now, guys, you have to understand, there are rules. There are rules to a devil's threesome which you must follow. Rule number one, guys, is you look down, and that's the only place you ever look. Down. That is it. You look at your stuff, her stuff. That's it. You never want to look up and be like, I'm having an orgasm making eye contact with my best friend. No, we do not want that. Rule number two. Pick which way you're gonna rotate, okay? At some point, you have to switch positions. You have to rotate. Pick which way, clockwise, counterclockwise. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Me and my friend did not pick the direction we were gonna rotate. And all of a sudden, we start switching positions, going around the same way. Now he's five foot ten. I'm four foot four. <laughs> certain things are lining up with certain other things. All right. I'm not paying attention. All of a sudden, I'm in the middle of an Indiana Jones movie, running away from the boulder. What? <laughs> The woman is on all fours. I run this way, hit her, bounce back. My buddy's not paying attention and just... Ah! 
He paintbrushed me. <laughs> But, did I quit? No. I didn't quit. I don't care, ladies. I don't care. I have one rule. One rule in bed. I don't come till you do, okay? That is my rule. I don't care that I have to do it looking like I'm in a battle scene from the movie Braveheart. No, I don't care. And I tell it to some of my guy friends. They're like, I don't know, bro. It sounds pretty gay to me. Listen, we are all at least a little gay, all right? We're all just a little gay. Some are more gay than others. And if you are, that's fine. But don't try to be there like, no, bro, I'm not gay at all. Really? You've never once looked at a V-neck shirt and thought, I think that looks good. Pretty fucking gay, okay? Pretty fucking gay. And I don't care. You can be the straightest man on the planet. You see a rock hard dick go inches from your face. There's a voice in the back of your head that goes, suck it. <laughs> I... Yeah. I didn't do it. All right. I didn't actually do it. But as I was passing by, I thought to myself, I know what to do with that thing. All right. <laughs> We're learning, people. We're learning. You learn stuff from a comedian tonight. You can learn stuff from the internet, video games. You can learn stuff, all right? Ladies, I want your man to be better for you. In order for him to be better, you have to understand how men learn, how men get better. We don't learn through nagging, no. You nag in one ear, out the other. Doesn't work. Understand this, ladies, your man is an incentive-driven creature, reward-driven creature. We like knowing that if we do lose something, we get something in return. That's how we function. You think about things like college football. They can't pay the players. So what they do on a lot of teams, player does something right, goes to the sideline, coach puts a little sticker on that fucker's helmet. That tells the world he did something right. Perfect. <laughs> ladies, you want to have some great sex? You should keep a stack of stickers on your nightstand ready to go. A stack. And have them in different colors based on how good the guy does. Have a gold one, a silver one, a bronze one, a blue one that says participant. Right. And coach him up. Coach him up. All right, men respond to those halftime speeches. There's a reason why coaches give them. They fire up guys. So ladies, you want to have amazing sex, look at your man and be like, hey, baby, we're fucking tonight. But before we do, team meeting right now. Team meeting, okay? <laughs> Cut it up right now. I need you to know something. You got to know something right here. You got to know this right here. This is what we play for right here. This is your pussy, baby. This is your pussy. And it's in your house. You have to understand something. Just because I say it's your pussy doesn't automatically always make it your pussy. No, because there are other men out there. Big men, strong men, handsome men. They want to take this pussy from you. They want to take your pussy. Right now, ladies, start pacing. Are you going to let another man do that to you? Are you going to let another man come into your house and take what is rightfully yours what you have rightfully earned no you're not gonna do that you're the man i know you're the man i love you're going to stand up for this pussy you are going to defend this pussy because when you're in this house you must protect this pussy oh shit guys if we hear that we'll act like we're in the locker room before the game like this is what we do this is what we do and we will attack like never before and when we hit that right spot just wow Sticker, right the head. That's what you do, right there. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brad Williams. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. We are not done. Sit down, we're not done, okay? Sit down, we're not this done. This is my first hour special. I still want to have fun. Do you guys still want to have fun? Yes! want to have fun. You look like you want to have fun. Do you want to have fun? All right, fucking come on up here. Come up here. Let's have some fun. Okay. Look around. There it is. Here, here, this chair right here. I want you to sit down right here. Now here's the deal. This is my special. This is a pinnacle for comedians. We dream about this. We gotta do something crazy for my special. We gotta do something that helps you guys remember who I am. How are we gonna do that? I think I know what we're gonna do because you guys are never gonna forget the night you saw Brad Williams perform and then at the end of the night, you saw this hot woman get a lap dance from a midget. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.
good time myself. We'll see you guys next time. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Okay. He's funny. Yeah. He's he's hilarious. Oh, he's really good. That yeah. was a good show. Yeah. I don't know if he has more stuff, but Oh yeah, he does. I, I definitely sure, want to yeah. watch some yeah. stuff. That's He's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he uses the jokes well though, like He does. He works with what he has. Like he makes that's awesome. Yeah. I think it's brilliant. He might as well use the material he gets every day just to do that. I would think, you know what, the sense of humor he has everything's funny yeah you know, he's got material everywhere yeah he's never gonna run out of shit <laughs> that was great the ramp on the back in two weeks i was gonna <laughs> put your clothes are gonna you. <laughs> oh my god okay well yeah. whew, I, I'm, my sheets hurt ow i got permanent grin yeah permanent permanent grin all right well that was good and uh i hope you guys enjoyed that we enjoyed that too that was good. Thanks for that suggestion. Bye! You got him. Bye! <laughs> you serious?